Partial upper or lower airway obstruction alters the mechanics of breathing. Let's look at a patient to see some of these physical signs of obstruction. This seven-year-old girl is about to undergo tonsillectomy for enlarged tonsils and sleep apnea. She's breathing an anesthetic gas. As she loses consciousness, her muscles relax and she starts to obstruct her airway. Watch how the mechanics of her breathing changes. When a patient is working hard to breathe, the accessory muscles of respiration, the sternocleidomastoid and scalene muscles, tends to lift the clavicles and allow fuller expansion of the chest. These muscles become tense and rope-like. Look how the skin over the tracheal notch is sucked inward, an important sign of obstruction. The harder the patient tries to breathe against both upper airway or lower airway obstruction, the more negative pressure is created inside the chest. This pressure differential sucks the soft tissue between ribs and at the sternal notch inward. When the diaphragm descends maximally, it pushes the abdominal contents downward and outward, further decreasing intrathoracic pressure. If the airway is obstructed, no air can enter the chest and this negative pressure pulls the chest wall inward. A rocking chest motion occurs, with the chest falling and the abdomen rising. This is the opposite of normal inspiratory motion. Other signs of airway obstruction can include poor movement of air in and out of the mouth and nose, nasal flaring, faint or absent breath sounds, head bobbing or grunting, and the inability of the awake patient to phonate. The anesthesia provider opens the airway by pulling up on the jaw, then inserts an oral airway. Look at the difference in chest wall motion now that obstruction is relieved. The chest and often the child's abdomen rise together with inspiration. Breath sounds are heard on auscultation. Air movement returns. When a clear mask is used, this air movement is seen as condensation inside the mask. Another important criterion is the color of skin and mucous membranes. Cyanosis is the bluish coloration of mucous membranes and skin due to deoxygenated hemoglobin in the blood vessels near the skin's surface. It occurs when arterial oxygen saturation falls below 85%. The bluish skin color associated with cyanosis is a late and sometimes unreliable sign of hypoxia because ambient lighting, skin pigment, and severe anemia make it hard to see. An oxygen saturation monitor is much more reliable if you have one. The ability to manage airway obstruction and to ventilate the patient with a bag valve mass device are essential skills in patient management. Early intervention can and does prevent problems and improve outcomes.